everybody. So um, we, if, if you feel free to finish up if you haven't yet, but uh, we would be happy to answer any questions about um, the process of making the film or about like what else we're planning to do. We'd also be happy to like hear any comments or ideas about things you'd like to see changed in the film. And of course, Josh and Chris can answer any question you have about you know being filmed or starting a record store or whatever, whatever you want to know. So go ahead. Back here. Uh, first of all, I want to say I miss other music more than any other store in New York, and this is an age New York we're talking. Uh, secondly, um, again, this is just my inner project manager. When you eventually launch you to the public, can you please have maybe a discography of all the cool music that you played and all the clips that you featured so that you heard anything like, wow, you know, I've been going to the store for a million years. I never heard that band, but i got to find out where they're at now. Could you please maybe put that up and make it part of the production process, some kind of discography or... Yeah, like for video. sure. Yeah. yeah, I think hopefully we've barely dived into that kind of stuff, but our hope would be that there would be some kind of soundtrack, whether that's only available digitally or or what. But Yeah, for sure, we will. Yeah, actually, Don, Josh's wife, is going to be helping us with that. Yeah. Little does she know. <laughs> for sure, we'll definitely do that. Thank you. Who's next? I don't see any hands. I see one back here. Hi, I, I, I also miss the uh, other music. It's like singing too. Um, I always wondered this. I worked at a, a CD store as a teenager, and I always had parents angrily coming in demanding to know why I, I sold garbage to their children. <laughs> Did that ever happen to you? I remember that. Yeah, I don't recall. Um, we didn't. We never had too many young kids, honestly, shopping in the in the store. Um, occasionally, like a cool parent would bring their kid in and let him explore a little bit. You know, why he looked at stuff himself, you know, or he or her um, were looking around. And I do remember like, towards the end, some younger people coming in, like they were buying, they were getting turntables or something for Christmas and some younger kids started coming in. But uh, honestly, over the years, most of the, our demographic was like, you know, not even college, I mean, it was like, it was after college even. It's like, I'm talking like 20, yeah, like 22 to 62 was like the people used to come in the shop pretty much. Um, but most of the time, it was, yeah, it was, it was like more cooler parents coming in with their kids and exposing them to different stuff too and they'd be shopping. Sometimes they'd shop with their own stuff or they'd just be tagging along. But I never, we never really had anybody uh, complain about some of the stuff we, you know, stuff we sold. Occasionally, someone would come in off the street and say something about one of the light boxes we had in the front. You know, but that was just random. That was just someone coming in saying like they were a little bit offended by the image, perhaps something like that. Um, but that was just, that was not a customer. That was just more like a person off the street complaining about something. <laughs> Of course, the landlord, too, would complain a little bit about that. Um, over the years, we had to take a couple things down based on his um, request. But, um, we definitely, we definitely had some, um, specifically, I remember a couple of like, dudes who would shop there a lot who would hide their purchases from their wives, though. They had like a separate credit card, and like they would describe how they would like because they would buy like you know a hundred dollars a week or something, and they would it, it had to be like snuck into the house. <laughs> All right. Um, do you guys have the right to do any sort of companion pieces with the in-store footage? I think um, the rights to the in-store footage. Josh and Chris never did any contracts with the bands. Uh, that it, right? Yeah, none of that stuff is licensed, so it's all to be worked out. We just yeah. filmed all those things. Um, some of them, uh, there's a few of the, the in-stores in there that were were contracted because they were like a sponsored series that we did for a while, that live and other music series, which was like a multi-camera shoot, and we would interview the bands afterwards and stuff. There's a little bit of that footage in there, but most of that is from our friend Derek Yep, who just would come to every in-store. I think he's... He was here. He said he had to leave early, yeah. so maybe he's not here anymore. Um, and he would just stand there with one camera with like the little like mic, that little boom mic on it, and, and hand us these videotapes um, the next week. You saw them in, the, in there, written on them. And honestly, I never watched a single one of them until tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think our hope is that like for the DVD release or um, for like renting it on iTunes with extras, we'd have some of those performances. 
added in. But so far, like the few, the little bit of outreach that we've started to do, like the artists are also, you know, supportive of other music and it meant so much to them that people aren't, um, people are, people would rather be the a great Mangum not, question yeah. still looms. It does. <laughs> but he just agreed to participate in a film about Elephant Six and. Yeah, our editor edited that, so he's yeah. good. You know, he feels... He didn't do an interview with them, but he allowed them to show his face. He did. He did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. amazing. He, you can see him in a couple of those other in-stores in the back. Yeah, he's standing out. in the refrigerator right. in-store yeah. when he's yelling at Tower Records, <laughs> laughing with his coffee. Um, I th think I saw somebody over here. I have a question, but uh, first I just want to say, Rob Cuomo, obviously I'm biased. I love you two so much. I'm so emotional right now watching this, and I love David movie so much, so thank you for... All the time I think Brendan said in the movie it was just so wonderful and beautiful. Um, yeah. <laughs> My quick question for Chris and Josh, and I didn't see it in the movie, I was just curious, and it's probably not important, but you guys had a store in Boston for a hot second, and when I shopped there, when it went away, I was also super sad. And the thing I always heard was that too many people were buying, they'd come into your store, look at the track list, and like download the music. I was curious if you could just talk a little about the Boston store, how you created it, and then maybe why it went under uh, something you were a part of. Or... I'll, get, I'll take a quick stab at it. I lived in Boston for like a year running that shop. Um, I mean, this is a whole other sub story, and it has to do with our partner, Jeff, who, who left the store and um, we kind of had a falling out with. But um, we were doing great in New York, and um, but it's always been a tough business selling records. You can't make very much money at it. We were super busy, but you know, just trying to figure out a way to, to do a little more. It seemed like there was a moment happening and Jeff really wanted to expand and some business people that were, he was friends with who were helping us out a little bit um, were pushing us to do it. And we spent a long time researching a bunch of cities. Um, we went to Boston. Uh, we spent way too much money on the, the real estate there was even more expensive than New York. Um, it was just a fortune to get a good spot. And then we spent a bunch of money having to renovate the spot because it was a wreck when we took it. So we had rung up a lot of debt. We borrowed a bunch of money um, when we to start it. And we were pretty busy in that store. Um, it was a lot of fun. There's a great music community there. But it was... Boston, it felt like because of the colleges there, they were maybe a little ahead on the broadband and the illegal downloading. Um, there was a lot of college kids who would shop there or browse there, and, it, and a lot of people, just this anecdotally, but it seemed like a lot of kids were at that point already starting to just, um, just download. I mean, we, one thing about other music is that we, what made us a great store in a certain way was that we would just grab these records from all over. So it wasn't unusual to have a $20 CD or a $35 LP or, you know, a lot of that stuff was kind of expensive because you were buying German imports or whatever, limited edition, private press things, whatever. So it was expensive, you know, and a, a record habit is a habit, is an expensive one. And um, it just was hard with the, the, the kids in Boston and whatever. We, we had a lot of customers, but I guess not enough. So we did it for like a year or no, wait, it was, how long was it open? Two years. two years, yeah. Two, I was living there for a year. It was open for two years, and it just was, it was a struggle. And so we just decided it wasn't worth it, and we just packed up and, and headed home. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty much, I mean, the decision to close it was more based on what was going on in New York. I mean, the store in Boston was doing, um, incrementally doing better every month. It wasn't, it didn't, like, take off like we did in New York when we first opened. It just, like, you know, when New York just went boom, like, right away. Um, but in Boston was incrementally going better and better all the time. And it was, you know, we thought it was going to get there for sure. But it's after 9-11 in New York was, that's what was really was going on. What was happening here in New York, like literally our cash flow went from, we were doing like incredible business to nothing. I mean, zero. We were closed for like a week. And then no one was buying anything for the weeks after that. And took, even that Christmas was really bad. Um, just people weren't, the tourism just stopped, um, and no one was in the mood to buy stuff as much, you know? It was really the, the cash flow of New York was funding the place in Boston, um, that keeping that open, because that wasn't, wasn't quite profitable yet, but it was getting there. Um, but we had to make a decision at some point, 
like, can we keep this thing going, you know, or like go and get into more debt to keep the Boston store going, or just shut that down and concentrate back on New York and wait till New York gets back on his feet and, you know, um, invest in that again, which, which is what we did. So we had to make the decision to really cut our, cut that store off and focus again on New York and bringing that back. But it's really, it was more to do with the cash flow happening at 9-11 and what, what went on here in New York that affected that store, ultimately. Great. That's like another little scene that we're not going to add, unfortunately. <laughs> Got to keep the movie fast-paced. Um, anybody else? Who's next? No, anybody? Uh, why didn't you carry metal in the store? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like they, you, they did have a metal section briefly started oh, yeah. by Massa. Massa was into metal, so she, I thought she put some stuff on the racks for a bit. But yeah. We would have asked her about it if she'd made time to do an interview with us, even though we live two minutes away from her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She, yeah. she was never very happy to see us. <laughs> but I mean, the store was largely, the, 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 the stock there was just what our staff was listening to. I, um, I don't think Chris or I ever listened to much metal. Um, and it just wasn't, we never had like a, someone who ended up there who just loved it and started pushing it and, and bringing it in for whatever reason. I mean, our, our stock varied over the years by who was there and what, you know, like when Jeff was the only buyer, we didn't have very much like hip hop or R&B because it just wasn't his thing and then just kind of changed as we had other buyers and it was, it was very much like what people were into who were working there and for whatever reason, Masa was like one of the only metalheads we ever had working there. Yeah, I think also like from my perspective, because I was working there at the time that you guys tried to do that section, was there were so few like metal titles that appealed to the other music audience, like bands like Sun and so sort of like more like drone experimental metal things were popular and you couldn't build an entire section around it and that stuff was easily like put into the in section or the out section, so yeah just didn't really seem necessary. Anybody else? Any comments about the film or uh, Angie? I don't have a comment about the film. It was great. I loved it. But I just wanted to know, like Chris and Josh, where do you guys go record shopping now in New York? And where, like, have you, you know, like, do you ever, do you go to physical spaces? And what, where do you uh, go? Or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still lucky enough to have my, my friend Jim Siegel over here. He, um, he sets me up with some, uh, I'm looking for stuff. Um, I said, Jim, can you order this for me? Jim's been working in stores since the other music closed. Um, he's currently at Academy now on 18th Street. And um, so I, he sets me up with some stuff and I still go to the, you know, the, the Academy stores mainly, uh, the one on 12th Street and one on 18th Street. Um, it's hard to find, to be honest, it's hard to find new, like Jim has to order me stuff because it's hard to find new stuff, to be honest. There's a lot of used, you know, stores, but to find like a new record all the times, and, you know, I still actually buy CDs, you know, and, um, for new things. I still actually prefer them, to be honest. Um, so Jim often has to order me stuff because they go to the Academy stores and they don't, like, oh, we don't, you know, they obviously don't carry CDs and then certain new things they don't even carry. It's, it's, it doesn't really work well for their store. Um, but yeah, those are the shops I kind of shop in. The Academy is pretty much what I frequent now. And I, I still dig around some, some used stuff here and there as well too, of course. I actually, for a, for a long time at the end of the other music era, I had a lot of trouble going into record stores, um, other record stores, whatever. I just was like, I don't know if I was just spending too much time at other music or it just became loaded. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I shop, um, I work in Greenpoint now. I stop at the Rough Trade Shop and the Academy Store, um, which are both kind of near my my office a lot. Um, I go to Human Head for a great used shop in Bushwick, kind of an incredible store. Um, Two Bridges downtown in Manhattan. Is just, I, I go there sometimes. Um, it's not all the time. I, sp I you know I spent a lot of time in record stores, um, but um, and I actually just got back from a great trip to Tokyo where I spent a ton of time in record stores. I, I visited like ten record stores. And that was incredible because physical music is still huge there and digital music is way behind. Um, it's like 20% of the market still in, in, in 
in Japan in general. So that was kind of incredible. And there's actually a Tower Records there, you might all know, which is full of CDs. It's actually like almost primarily a CD store. Um, but there's also like, I went to the most amazing HMV I'd ever been to, which is all vinyl. And it's, it was a crazy selection of like amazing reissues of like Japanese psych stuff, these beautiful copies of stuff I'd never seen in the US and a lot of really cool things there. That was kind of fun because record stores are, um, are a big deal there still. And, and I went to a couple places that really reminded me of other music more than, more than any place I'd, I had been in the US in a long time. Yeah, I, I, still have a, I honestly have a little hard time when I'm, I'm at, I, I actually, when I go to some shows at Rough Trade, I'll, I'll go earlier, you know, stay later and shop around for a bit. And, and um, yeah, I still have a hard time. It's, it, it hits too close to home, you know, like I really miss it. Definitely. And, um, and I always run into somebody I know, of course, there, you know, at Academy or Rough Trade or something like that. Someone's like comes up to me and, or, you know, an old customer or something. And it's, um, yeah, I just have, a, I, do, I still have a hard time with it. To be, to be honest. Yeah. Tom? Can you guys make a list of a playlist of all the songs that are featured in the film and the artists? For sure, yeah. We'll, we'll do that um, it, once the film is officially out. I'm sure we'll do a Spotify playlist or something. <laughs> uh, Apple Music deal. Um, yeah, we'll inevitably do that for sure. Yes. Hey, Rob. Hey, Dwayne. Hey, I just want to say you did a fantastic job. It was really, really good. Do you notice you got the only round of applause, Dwayne, with anyone <laughs> when you appeared on screen? <laughs> Sorry you're not a lawyer. Probably would be much happier. Yeah, so my first question for uh, Chris and Josh, I know probably when you started this venture that you didn't think you would all of a sudden find yourself 20-something years later looking at this in, on screen, and I know you are kind of like in the inside, so it's hard kind of tough to kind of, you know, you're in, you're in, you know, you're inside of it. So seeing this for the first time, is there any, you know, as an outsider kind of looking in and how people perceived it, is there anything that you learned about the store or your relationship with it that was kind of a re revelation just off the top that you that maybe you didn't see when you were in it? Chris will think about this for a second. I can give a very brief answer. I, 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 I mean, to me, this was like watching a scrapbook of you know my life or something, and and I found it, uh, you know, very sweet and moving, and and uh, definitely made an incredible feeling to see. Um, I think what I maybe the gist of what I got out of it, I got out of our last six weeks at other music in the same way, where that like we were just so beaten down in a certain sense by the conundrum we were in, we, you know, like we were really struggling financially. It was kind of hard for a number of reasons to conceive of both just like, what are we gonna do next? Can we really close this place? It's all we've done. I was 25 when, when we opened other music and you know, I was older than that when we closed. And um, <laughs> so I was just like trying to, um, it was, there were, for a lot of reasons, we struggled for several years thinking we probably need to close the store, but how are we going to do it? And it, it felt like a, you know, a weight around my neck sometimes. And when we announced we were closing immediately, the outpouring of love that we got from um, everyone, I, I knew that people would be upset or sad, that it would be a big deal. I mean, we definitely like kind of planned out the announcement and thought about how we would roll things out, sort of expecting, oh man, people are gonna freak out and we need to give everyone a chance to say goodbye and try to wind this down in, a, in, a, in an honorable way. We were, it was important to us that we didn't just like close and disappear and we thought it was a chance that like we could just be like, man, our landlord's just locking us out. We can't be here anymore or something. So we, we made an effort to, to do it in a more formal way, but just the, those last six weeks and just reiterated here, you kind of just like don't really think about what it means to everyone else and, and it's just like where you're going every day and you know I had a, many amazing experiences there and, and met so many incredible people but um, I just kind of didn't realize how much 
it touched people. I, I still, I'll never forget, you know, the weird random people who would just come and knock on the door those last few weeks and just say they wanted to take a little a, a bin card or just tell you the craziest stories about what they'd, you know, how they met their husband or wife or started a band or decided to follow their dream or something because of the weird creative energy in there or something. And then it was, you know, people, it was clear when we, when we were decided to close how much it meant to people. And that was a very, um, it's kind of surprising, honestly, in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah as Josh said, we, we, we knew people were going to be pretty upset by the decision and to close, but and we were overwhelmed this last six weeks, just the, with all the outpouring. We knew it was going to be emotional for people, but not that emotional. I mean, it was really intense. Um, and even, even now, like two and a half years later, you know, just watching this and, and then in fact, it's just y'all you being here, you know, and still caring is, um, still gets me, you know, it's still, um, we, I didn't, didn't know we had that kind of, um, we knew it was going to be an effect on people, but not that much of an, uh, of an effect. And I still get people stop, people stop me sometimes and then, you know, like I said, other, other stores or even on the street. And say something to me, um, and it, um, I'm constantly still amazed. And just watching this, I didn't it kind of hit you all over again, you know. Um. Great, great question. Um, thank you, guys. So I, I think. On that note, we'll just hang out. We have the place till five, so feel free to stick around. Um, if you have anything you want to say to us privately in terms of like something you'd love to see added or something you didn't love about the film, we sincerely want to hear that because it'll only help us make the film better before it um, starts to get shown at festivals, hopefully soon. Anything? No. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. Thanks for being well, here. Well, Paloma, I can't say enough about these two. Just basically like about an hour after we made that announcement that we were closing, Rob was like, I'm going to just come down. He had his camera and then he was just like, can I just start filming? And he kind of never left. And um, it, um, it means a lot to us, obviously. Uh, it, it's, it was unexpected where everything went with that. And thank you for this amazing document. Thank you, Josh.